the art of trade station candlesticks and technical analysis. I'm David Russell, VP of Market Intelligence here at Trade Station. Um, the following presentation is for educational purposes only. All symbols and trading ideas discussed by the instructors are for demonstrational purposes only and are not recommendations. This presentation is not offer solicitation of any kind in any jurisdiction where any trade station affiliate is not authorized to do business, including but not limited to Hong Kong and Japan. Active trading is not suitable for everyone. Options and futures trading carries a high degree of risk and is not suitable for all traders. Please read the disclosure information handout um, or the electronic disclosure information available on the trade station website. Okay, I just wanted to mention that our sister company, You Can Trade, is doing a special event, the Spring Summit, called Trading with Style between April 9th and 11th. It's going to be um, a free three-day event with all kinds of information about day trading, swing trading, um, and investing. It's ready to help you cultivate and refine your trading strategies. Um, you can go to youcantrade.com and then uh, slash trading with style. Um, it's right there on the youcantrade.com website. All right, so I shared... Um, some links and wanted to um, just first I'll tell you that we're going to, these are the, the things we're going to go through today. Um, I wanted to share those links first and show you how to load the custom tools. So now if you go, if you're in, all right, let me just go to my, my zip file and I'll show you what this actually looks like. Um, here is a zip file for today. When you open it, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see three things. <clears throat> First, this is the slides. This is a, a PDF. Uh, this is the slide, the PowerPoint slide. <laughs> Secondly, this is an ELD that contains some um, some special indicators uh, that I'm created. I've created. And I'm going to be sharing with you guys. So you want to double click on this. <clears throat> you have to have TradeStation open. You double click on it. It will then let you import those studies into TradeStation. And um, once you've done that, you can then go to the workspace, which is this this uh, item here. So basically, this is what you're going to be looking at. It's this. Um, this is the workspace you'll see, and this one we're going to be working on today. Um, now, I shared a couple other things with you. I thought really quickly I would start off by just telling you, um, kind of, um, you know, what what the market kind of looks like to me here because uh, it is interesting. I want to let you guys know that I actually write for a few different areas. If you're on the Trade Station website and you go to Insights, this is the blog, the Market Insights blog that, that I um, I run. And then uh, secondarily, I also publish ideas over on TradingView, which is an outside charting service that you can link to your Trade Station account. And these are some um, interesting sort of um, ideas I've been putting up. I wanted to mention that... Um, some of these things are kind of really popping up now. The S&P uh, is interesting, you know, today at a very weak close. And as I look at this, I want to just kind of just quickly mention that um, I see a few things happening here and it's kind of, I'm leaning more toward the kind of, you know, cautious side at this point. And I want to mention that I think it's going to be interesting to think about using these tools that I'm kind of teaching to be looking for some of the leadership areas like financials and stuff that have some, some good pullbacks. Um, which could potentially happen. So like, for example, one thing that I'm thinking about kind of looking toward is something like the banking, you know, the banking stocks, which have had amazing runs. You know, look at these have pulled back, um, not yet, you know, to their 50 day moving averages or red line here. So some of the stuff I'm going to be getting into in this class is going to be showing how to look for those, how to find potential reversal candles that would find support and things like that. So these are some of the things I'm going to be showing you, but I want to kind of say right now, as I look at where the market is now, if you think about it right now, you know, what do we have? It's interesting. Um, in fact, I want to show this other very quickly. This is from one of the other um, a workspace from another um, um, webinar that I had done. But what this does is this allows me to look at where strength is in the market. And what's interesting now, if we look in the last month, all the leadership, if you look, has really come from um you know, utilities and consumer staples. And then we see the risk on stuff, semiconductors, technology, and especially global stocks are taking a beating right now. So we're seeing something right now that it's kind of a bearish combination. We are seeing TLT go up which is the bonds are starting to rebound. And at the same time, we're seeing the dollar continue to go higher. That combination of a rising dollar and falling interest rates is kind of a bearish thing. The secondary thing, I actually have an idea here today on the dollar if you want to look at that. And here's the actual link to trading view if you want to look at this. But then the other thing I want to mention is there's a lot of stocks that were these kind of like really momentum, high beta technology stocks. 
Um, like, for example, I think some of you guys know, obviously, I mean, like Zoom communications. This one's been struggling for a long time. But we other stocks like Twilio um, and Digital Turbine. These are just super momentum stocks. And they've all been showing real signs of fatigue here. So I wanted to just kind of mention this out, uh, mention this right now, because you know, we're seeing a lot of signs of risk aversion. We're seeing in the last uh, few days that the main strength has been coming from the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, and that's just another sign of people kind of getting more cautious. So all those things together right now, I think, are, um, you know, kind of pointing in that direction. Um, the other thing I want to mention is, is that I am actually have an article coming out tomorrow about how China has really been slamming on the brakes in their economy and how that is weighing on a lot of different um, you know, parts of the market. And it very well could continue to. I was wondering, why are semiconductors so weak? And then I go over and I look at China saying that they're going to deliberately slow down their economy. Those things happening together, it's interesting because China consumes a lot of semiconductors. Then the other thing I, I wanted to kind of point to that I do think is interesting is if you look at some of these railroads, I've been watching these with some of the other classes we had done, we had looked at things um, you know, like um, some of the ways to look for stocks like this that are squeezing toward highs, even as the market um, is showing weakness in other areas, like technology stocks breaking lower, but some of the railroad stocks are doing well. I want to mention this because these are some of the areas where there are still things out there. And if you look through some of the links that I shared with other webinars, I showed how to find some of those things. The last thing I want to mention is that um, there has been relatively excessively bullish sentiment, according to the AAII, the American Institute of Individual Investor Survey, that's getting more toward the complacency side here. And then you take a step back and you think about it right now, the market has priced in a reopening of the economy. Um, we've priced in a dovish Fed, but then we kind of are in this no man's land now of about a month before the big earnings reports hit. So I don't want to be like, really expressing a, a bearish thing here because um, you know there's still a lot of bullish technicals in the market right now. But I want to say that right now, if we're starting to think about the potential for something like some pullbacks, some of those are going to be some tools that we're going to see right here, right now in, in this webinar. So first of all, um, let's just look at the agenda now. So I showed you guys how to load the custom tools. Um, like I said, when you when you load the actual um, zip file, and you, if you double click on this, this is what it will actually look like. It'll say, hey, you're importing something, you click next. And then these are the um, the indicators and you hit finish. Now I'm not gonna do that because I already have them installed on my computer. Um, I'm gonna close this old workspace. This was in um, one I think I did in December or November. If you look back, I, I shared the link. It's one of the articles on, on um, Market Insights. In fact, I, I will mention that over on Market Insights, if you're interested, if you go to education platform, there's a whole series of, of webinars here that I, myself and other people have done, you know, explaining how to do um, different kinds of um, analysis with the trade station platform, um, fundamental, technical, things like involving earnings and a lot of other stuff. So uh, this is a great, uh, you know, resource here. Okay. So the first thing I wanted to start off with was um, using Scanner. All right, so now Scanner is this tool on the TradeStation platform. And here's the workspace I have today. I've already created these scans, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so I have some space to work with. And then I'm actually just gonna erase these. These are ones I already created, but I'm gonna show you right, how, right now how to build them. I already have some results. And we're gonna run them as I do some other stuff. So the first thing we wanna do is, if you go to your slide here, this is I think slide number four, um, this is how we do it. The first thing we're gonna do with scanner is, we're gonna hit create a scan, and I'm gonna call this one um, Keltner. Now Keltner bands are these bands on the outside of price. So what we're looking for in this case, is we're gonna create a scan that will find stocks that have pulled back to test a Keltner band. So there's a potential way to find a pullback. All right, so let's call this Keltner. So first I give it a name, then I'm gonna select my universe of stocks. And in this case, I'm gonna say all stocks. Now that's gonna have, I don't know, like 10,000 symbols. So what I wanna do now is I wanna, I wanna weed out everything that trades less than a half a million shares a day. So I'm gonna go to volume average 10 day, greater than 500,000, oops. Greater than, and I click over here, 500, one, two, three. Don't use commas, all right? And now the next thing I'm gonna do, let me just, right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this thing here, 
all these values here at the top of scanner are built in the scanner already. They're just kind of like on the fly, ready to go. But you can also use indicators that it will then calculate. So something like a moving average. You can say, I want the 28 day moving average. Well, you can actually add that in and then it will have to calculate it. So when you use an indicator, it's gonna go more slowly. These other items at the top of the list Things like volume, market cap, these are just available like in the in the in trade stations, just you know, memory. It's just right there available. So it scans a lot faster. So by basically using the volume average 10 day, that's gonna be a really quick way to weed out probably two-thirds, three quarters of the symbols that are there. So now we're gonna to go to Keltner channel. Now you, these are just a little bit of, of little details, a little settings you have to make sure you get right. All right. So in this case, this is, you can see here there's a Keltner channel right here on this chart upper and lower. So we want to change this lower band, right? And then we want to set lower band greater than, oops, greater than. And now we're going to go to these existing fields, price, I'm going to go to high. Now, the cool thing about this is there's multiple highs. You can say one day, two days. So you could say, I want to see something that tested the Keltner band two days ago. Then you would say like high dude, two days ago. I'm going to do high today. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to hit run. And now it's going to crank away. I'm going to create another one called Bollinger. And I'm going to do the same thing with that. So I'm going to go more quickly. Bollinger next. I'm going to say all stocks. And then I'm going to say next. And then I'm going to go to criteria. I'm going to go to volume. Volume average 10 day. Greater than 500,000. And then I'm going to go to... Bollinger Band is going to be really a similar thing. I actually like Keltner better. I mean, it's probably a Coke and Pepsi thing. Um, the idea with both of these is they essentially use different kinds of volatility to um, you know, standard deviations to find where should a stock move. So that way, if a stock has a lot of volatility, it will create the bands wider and stuff like that. Make sure you actually do Bollinger Bands. There's multiple indicators here. Um, like there's another one that will simply plot how wide the Bollinger Bands are. That's a way to find volatility um, when volatility has tightened or widened. Um, and that can be good for people looking to buy or sell options. We're not going to do that now. We should go to Bollinger Bands, hit OK. Then we're going to do the same thing, lower band, right? Price greater than, I mean, yeah, we can do greater than price high. And what that's going to do is that's going to find one where, um, I'm sorry, price, it's going to basically find um, stocks where the, um, with a high price, um, well, it's going to find that it's actually touching the Bollinger Band because if it goes down to the low, um, if the um, if the Bollinger Band if if, if the either Keltner or Bollinger Band is above the high, then that's going to basically mean that the that the price itself is under the Bollinger Band or at least it's touching it. So this is like a good way. You can add more steps. You could say I want to find ones where it's above the Bollinger Band and the low is below the Bollinger Band. You can do all that, but that's easy enough to figure out as well. Okay. While that's running, I'm going to go into the Parabolic SAR. Parabolic SAR is another one created by um, Wells Wilder, and um, it's on this chart. So I have, um, this is uh, Keltner Channels, and this is Parabolic SAR. And this one here are just simple, are like moving averages, um, and we're going to get to that as well. All right, so Parabolic SAR basically plots when a stock is making highs or making lows, and it, what it will do is it will put these dots above or below price to then basically say if it's which way it's trending. All right, so what we're going to do now with Parabolic SAR is we're going to add a few more steps with that. Here we go. Right with Bollinger Bands right now. Bollinger Bands came back, and here's what it returned now. I want to make sure you guys see there's this little green S here, and you'll notice it's here as well. That's called symbol linking. So if I click on one of these, it's going to bring up the stock over here. So these are stocks now that pull back. Now, I would add that today, Bollinger Bands, you know, this is obviously – um, I think right now there's some unusual things happening actually in the market. We had kind of, um, you know, some, some big drops in certain areas. And I think what actually happened is the Bollinger Bands widened out in certain areas that had taken a beating recently, like energy and financials. Because if you look back, energy, energy in particular, if you look back earlier in the week, I was doing another class, look at a stock like Apache. All right. So this was one that, um, this one should be on the Keltner. And this one is on is probably going to be on our Keltner. But for some reason, it's not. Um, anyway, so this was one that had pulled back and it found some, um, you know, it had kind of come back in here. And I think some of these what happened was 
it widened out on us. So anyway, I'm going to go on to the next one and get this running so we can move on. The next one is going to be parabolic SAR. So we have parabolic SAR. I'm going to go to next. All stocks. Volume average 10 day greater than 500,000. Now, the other nice thing is you can add things like market cap if you want. Um, all right. Now I'm going to go to the indicator. This one's a little bit more complicated. It's Parabolic SAR has more data coming out of it. And we need to make sure we, we select the right things. So go to indicator. Interesting question about things that are optionable. Let me see if I can get that. There is a way you can actually, you can actually do that. Um, I'm going to go to, it's a good question. You can, all right. All right, so Parabolic SAR. We want to basically set, there's this thing, when it changes from like in this case, this was bullish, this goes bearish, that is called crossbars ago. And we want to basically set that to being less than five. So that means that a, that a, 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 a trend direction has recently changed. And now, but the thing is that can be either bullish or bearish. So now we need to add another line, parabolic SAR. And this time we're going to go to parabolic SAR. And what we're going to do is we're going to set a uh, park, um, this, this par close, right? The, um, that's the actual price. We're going to set it to less than price low. Now, the thing about parabolic SAR is it's going to bring back a lot of results. So we're going to add one more criteria to this. And that is going to be the indicator moving average. So we're going to say we want to find stocks that are trading above their 200-day moving average. We're looking for something bullish. So we're going to add moving average, one line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set that to 200 days right here in length. So this is a little button here, right? We're going to go to length, 200 days. And then we're going to say with the moving average less than price. low. Okay, good. I'm gonna let that, that run now. Now, the, the question you had about how do I know if something is optional? It's a really good question. Um, when this runs, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you some ways to do that. We can find stuff not only that's optional, we can also find stuff that trades a lot of options. Um, and I'll get to that next. All right. All right, so while that's running, I want to just go on to candlesticks. Um, you know, a lot of you guys use candlesticks. I want to just kind of um, just quickly mention, you know, the basic things that, um, the, the, the great thing about using candlesticks. So this is a candlestick chart. And this is something special on TradeStation. You'll notice that um, this is called candle trend. We go to study and we go to style. We want to change it. You can see we have like a line chart. You can have um, the traditional open, high, low, close bars. You know, a lot of people really like candles for a few reasons. Now, there is one, something here that's something called candle. Now, this is not as useful in my view because all the bars are colored the same way. We want candle with trend. Go to style, candle with trend. And the reason is because this allows us to see exactly, you know, where it, where it opened, closed, and it, it clearly illustrates for us when you have a big hollow bar like this, it means it opened down here and it closed at the top of the bar. And then it's price moved on either side with these kind of big tails. And this is something that, you know, is very useful and it allows us to see a range of motion over time, which is, uh, which can be very useful. Um, so the great thing about this, I'll just show you something that I was looking at today, for example, with, um, yeah, I think this actually worked very interestingly today on the S&P futures on, on like an hourly chart because it works on all kinds of different time frames. But if you look at like how it was going up and just probing up here, it's really interesting. I want to actually point out because this is something I was watching and it was one of the things that made me publish this, uh, the bearish kind of uh, note on trading view. If we go to drawing and we go to line, look at this. You can basically see this. Look at that came right down. This is an hourly chart of futures in the S&P 500. Go to another you know, trend line here. Um, and you can see that there was something of a triangle forming here. Um, one thing I've noticed about trading the indexes is that if you think you see a triangle, you almost certainly do see a triangle. 
um, and just let it form um, because it, it, it kind of starts to take shape. You're like, wait a second, it made a higher low, but now here it is and it's making a lower high. Oh, it's going to break out. No, it won't. I mean, almost always you're going to see that triangle turn into something and it's going to, it's going to tighten in on you. So that's something I want to point out. So this thing that popped up on the hourly chart, but you can really see how it kind of probed down to these levels like this. This is all stuff that happened in the overnight, but you can also see how it kind of went up and tried to test some of these levels. So, I mean, candlesticks are super useful for that reason. There are some drawbacks to them because like, obviously trading that happens in the middle of the night is less important than trading that happens during the normal day. It's good to look at everything, but when you look at daily uh, charts of stocks, um, candles can be um, especially useful. So there's different sorts of you know patterns that people look at. And the one that I've actually been looking at a lot recently is called a kicker. Wait a second, here it is. All right, so this is something that's kind of like a false breakdown or an attempted breakdown. What it normally has is, isn't it? And these have all been bullish for the last several months that I've seen at least. Um, it's usually an extreme move to the downside. And what happens is the stock will close at the low and you think, oh, it's it's over. And then the next day it comes ripping back. So you're going to see um, a bullish one is going to be a, a solid bar going down and then a hollow up bar after. So for an example of that is Tesla back in September, September 8th and 9th, right here. Look at this. Now, if we look back on the Tesla chart, what we can see is this was a support level. And this is something that we had actually written about on Market Insights. If you look back to that time, we write a lot about Tesla. Most recently, we've been writing about some negativity on Tesla. I'm going to get to that in a second. But um, what's interesting here is, as you can see, you had these highs. And another nice thing about the, about the candlesticks is you can clearly see it opened up at these levels. At this point, it was overbought. It had this big movement in the summer. It was getting crazy. It gets up here and it can't hold those levels. But then it has this huge move up. And then when it comes back, now, suddenly, those areas become support. So this is a very positive, bullish sort of thing here. And you know, targeting Tesla coming off of this level um, is, um, is, a, is a classic example of a kicker. The reason is you had this big beat down. It was at a support line, which is like a double version of confirmation. And then you see the, the big bar coming up. It doesn't have to be a solid bar necessarily. It doesn't really matter. And one thing I want to just mention with kickers is it doesn't exactly have to be two candles. The key thing is you want to see this big, ugly bar down, and you want to see it basically not have any follow through and you want to see it followed by buying. It might take a day or two, but the basic principle of a kicker is the bears tried and they didn't succeed. All right. Another example is snap. Well, before we do it, I'm going to just show you Tesla because I've been writing about this, but I want to mention that 700 is looking like a very unlucky number now for Tesla. There's this le level right around here. And we've written about this. If you look on Market Insights, there was a big trend line here coming up and it broke right here at 700. And now since then, 700 has been resistance on Tesla. Um, a lot of companies now are coming out with electric cars and, and we we wrote about that a lot last week. All right. Um, snap. Snap had a nice kicker back on January 27th and 28th, right here. Look at this. Beats down, and the same thing. You see some support areas down here in the high 40s, comes down. It's also at the 50-day moving average. So this is like in many ways, like the, the way to look at something like this would be an entry around here. Because what you basically have is you have the beat down to support. You know it's support because you see it having held many other times. And on top of that, you have this bullish, um, you know, rising 50-day moving average. It, it comes down, it cannot hold, and then it comes snapping back and then the bulls follow through. The next example is Facebook. Um, on January 14th, this was over, I think, Martin Luther King Day, so we had kind of a longer period of time here. But we have this big, ugly candle down, and then basically there's just this explosion back up. You know, it holds. You actually have an inside day here, which is another candlestick. Um, so you'll notice this is an outside day and an inside day. An outside day means that the high is above the previous high and the low is below the previous low. And then we have secondarily an inside day, which means that you 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 have a lower high and a higher low. Um, and it's interesting is you can see this on TradeStation and um, the radar screen that I'm going to show you later actually can find these. So what you can do is if you look at this, so I go to studies and then I go to add study, this is going to be discovered with 
a show me. A show me I, I only shows when um when an event happens, unlike an indicator. So you just realize it's not under indicator, it's under show me. And I'm gonna I can add here inside bar and then I can add outside bar. And inside bar is gonna be blue. That sounds good. Outside bar, let's make it white so it doesn't. All right. And now you can see outside bar, inside bar. This is a very powerful bullish reversal pattern. It's a kicker. It's an outside bar and an inside bar all on top of each other. And the other nice thing is, well, I want to say nice thing, but the other interesting thing is it's at a support level down here, which was a high from back here in July. And it's also the 200 day moving average. So Facebook down at this level had all kinds of, um, of interesting sort of things happening. So I wanted to just um, you know, show how that, that really worked on that one. All right, the next thing is a doji. Now, a doji is when you see, um, I'll just show you the example. A good example of it is Apple, right? At the time of the election back in November. Right here, there's a doji on Apple. It has a big tail up and a big tail down. Amazon on January 12th. Right here, had a big tail up and a big tail down. It holds that level. It's interesting, it comes back, um, but it still holds that level. And this is a, a strong signal here that this sort of bearishness in the downtrend had been you know, ended. And once you get to the bottom of the range, you see something like a doji, it's gonna be a reversal pattern. Because we were near the bottom of the range and the trend was lower, it basically means at that point, we wanna be looking to the upside. Another interesting example was Skechers. Skechers had a doji on February 1st. Right there, you can see it came down with this big kind of spinning top doji pattern. And that was also had been coming down. And then, you know, this is a very volatile stock, but if you look right around 34, there's also some, you know, history of hitting this level, like right here. And right here, there's a lot of, of kind of price action here, but you can see that a level like this, you have a, a kind of flat line on top of that, you have the doji there. So this is an example of how a doji can, um, can confirm um, a reversal. The other net one now is the hammer. Okay, this is a potential bullish reversal pattern. You wanna basically see something that's trending down and then has a long tail to the downside and then it comes back and holds it. So an example of a hammer is MasterCard on October 30th, right here. There's a classic sort of hammer. It comes all the way down and it basically goes to you know a five or six month low. It has this big tail down and then it holds and then you get this nice rebound to the upside. So this is an example right here. This is a classic hammer. Another one is this stock, Actually, you know what? I have the wrong ticker for this one. Apps. I apologize. If you go to your, you want to change in here, this is APPS. Well, that's correct. Oh, I got that wrong. Anyway, somehow I, I, all right. Apps had a hammer on October 30th. This, this stock has been crazy right here. Same thing. It was a multi month low, pulls back hard, probes all the way down, comes back. And then you get a continuation from that line. This is one of the stocks actually that I mentioned that um, is kind of showing signs of, of you know, real fatigue. This has been one of the strongest of your sort of explosive growth stocks. And um, all these have been starting to really you know, weaken. This is probably held up better than almost any other um, that I'm aware of. Um, but that was a classic hammer right back here. So the nice thing about this is what we want to be thinking about the hammer is, you don't want to necessarily be using it on a stock that is just terrible going to like in a deep downtrend, like the way General Electric used to be doing. Um, you know, if you look at a stock like this, it'll give you like, <clears throat> you know, some hammers for short term trades. You're going to get, you know, some things like this. It'll give you a lot of kind of weird signals along the way. You know, this is something that I think is, is best used when it's a bullish stock that has that's pulled back and maybe even has a healthy pullback. 
But a stock that is just getting totally clubbed, especially at a time like this when the market was, you know, getting hammered by coronavirus, something like an individual hammer isn't overly important. And I just want to emphasize that Um, you don't really want to be putting too much emphasis overall on candlesticks. They're useful within the bigger context of something else, especially when you can combine them with different kinds of moving averages or levels. But one, you know, like one candle in and of itself, um, it's not all by itself you know, going to necessarily give you everything. What you really want to see is you want to see how it interacts with other levels on the chart and other indicators. What is the difference between a hollow and a solid candle? Okay, great. So basically when it's solid, what that means is, is that it closed at the low. The great thing about candles with trends is a stock like this opened, a, a, a day like this opened all the way up here at the, at this line which is around 1389 on General Electric. It went all the way up to like 1413 and then went all the way down to like 1322. And then it still managed to come back. This is green because the close, which is at the bottom of the solid, is above the close here. So if it's hollow, it means that it closed above the open. If it's solid, it means it closed below the open. So something like this, it fell and then it kept falling all day. Something like this, it rose at the open and it kept rising all day. That's what these mean. So the great thing about candlesticks is it really tells you so many things at once. And it allows you to see like how, you know, look at how this, you can see how this came down and it probed and held this level. You can see how it comes down and probes that. Um, you can see that it, it gapped down almost gap down it comes sh shooting down and then it takes a real beating and then it holds though this level that's the great thing about candlesticks it, it makes all that super clear so another um hammer was in overstock.com which is a very volatile stock but it had a classic um pattern on march 5th right here so this is another stock that had kind of come back if you look at 60 on this level, on, on this company here, it's not an exact level, but you can see that this had been an area where it had been consolidating several times and it bounced around 60. So it had come down, formed a hammer, and then you had some continuation. Um, so that's another example of, of, of a useful hammer. Okay. So let's go back and look at some of our scans. I'm going to minimize, I'm going to shrink this back down and here's my scan. So parabolic SAR, let's see what it gave us real quick. I like to just sort by your, um, your average volume and it, it kind of, you know, lets us see the bigger companies. So a company like Microsoft, this is interesting. Microsoft recently had parabolic SAR turn positive. Another one, this is a company called Vuzi. This is a very interesting stock. It's, um, they do these kind of smart, glasses. This is going to be, you know, right now, um, you know, depending on on what the market does, um, if we do get more downside or, or, or what happens, but there's going to be a handful of new technologies that are, um, that are interesting. And I wanted to just mention that one of them that I've looked at um, is 3D printers. And Vuzi is another one like this. They do these augmented reality goggles, like for people, so they can like be technicians and fix machinery and stuff. It's a very interesting um, you know, relatively new business. So, you know, you go back a year ago, it was all about, you know, streaming video, e-commerce, cloud software, data mining, all that stuff. That was the, the, the bull market that started in 2000. You know, it started, you know, last May when we started seeing stocks just like Etsy all go higher because they were these amazing new e-commerce companies and data mining companies and that sort of stuff. Now, I think it's interesting that we might actually start to get into things like 3D printing and things like these augmented reality sort of things. So I wanted to just, to just mention that. So here's one that came up. Apps is also on the list as having you know, a bullish um, you know, pattern um, in terms of parabolic um, SAR. All right, let's see what our Keltner channel gave us. This is Keltner channels. All right, so this is one here where we can see here's an oil stock that came down and um, you know, and is at the bottom of its Keltner channel. Let's see something like Eli Lilly. 
So some of these here are, are trending lower and that's okay because I wanted to show you the next step of how we're gonna handle that with Keltner is we're gonna go in here and we're gonna say, you know what? I only wanna see stocks that are in more of an, of, of an uptrend. So what we can do now is we can add moving averages to, um, to this scan. And this is just a great thing. If you look at some of the other webinars I shared, I'm not gonna get into it in this one, but TradeStation allows you to pull up all kinds of fundamental values like PE ratios, earnings growth, revenue growth. Um, and you can say, I wanna find stocks that match these criteria that have a PE ratio of this or a dividend yield of that. And then you can include that. Um, I'm not gonna show you this much now, but if you just go here and you go into financial strength, um, if you go into profitability, dividends, all these things, valuation ratios, you can go in there and then just say like, hey, I want to find stuff with a PE ratio of this or that. Um, there's a, a wealth of information available to you. Um, I did that in the last webinar on um, fundamental analysis and doing valuation with TradeStation. So that's available to you as well. But I just wanted to do technicals in this one. All right. So what do we want to do now is you want to find stocks where we're going to have um, a bullish setup of uh, in terms of moving averages for our kind of intermediate trend. So I'm gonna do another indicator. This indicator is going to be, um, I'm gonna compare the 21 day exponential moving average to the um, to this 50 day simple. So I go to indicator and then I go to moving average exponential. And then I'm going to say I want it to be greater than moving average one line. You just hit the letter, by the way, to jump down the list if you're curious about that. Now, these both have their own values, so we need to make sure we, we change those. This is set to nine day, and this is set to nine day. So we, I want to do 21 day exponential moving average greater than the 50 day simple moving average. And moving average one line is simple moving average exponential is um is um is, is the exponential one i'm going to go ahead and hit run so this approach um can be added to any scan um so for example you might want to find stocks like we did this with the um with the parabolic SAR, the last grade in the 200 day simple day moving average. You might want to do like the 50 day simples over the 200 day. I know some people who want to look for stocks where the five day is over the 20 day moving average. That will find stocks that are in nice tight uptrends. Right now, I don't think there's many that are, um, except maybe some healthcare stocks. Um, you know, if you look at like United Healthcare, for example, um, that's one that might have, you know, something like that. It's been in this very tight, you know, interesting trend, something like UNH. Um, and um, I have this set right now. This is actually the, the eight day exponential, but you know, some people look at the five and the, um, the 20 day. So you can basically weed stuff out by, by adding all kinds of other moving averages like that. Okay, so I wanna just explain. Um, an indicator always plots. So for example, a moving average um, is like this. It will always plot a value. You have volume and things like that. Parabolic SAR is an indicator. Keltner bands are indicators. They will always plot values. A show me will only plot something when, when something happens. So this is set to outside bar, inside bar, things like that. It will only show when one of those things is actually happening. So you can also add like something like a doji. That's also, we can go here, go to studies, add study, and then same thing, we can go to show me. And it's called C candlestick doji. And I can add that one. Let's make this one a color. I want to make sure it's a color I'm not using. We'll make it like um, this kind of yellow. I'm not using that. And it'll show dojis. The other nice thing, you know, here's another idea. Just go to style, go to cross. Okay. There's a few different ways that you can see it. You can make them different sizes. You can, you can do different things to kind of highlight them, but these also exist. Um, and you can make these go onto the charts as well, which is, which is great. All right. Let's see what this gave us now that we look for stuff uh, where the 21 day EMA is over. And what do we find? We find here um, a series of stocks that have, um, that have been in more clear uptrends. Same thing here. We're finding some of these energy stocks. Um, 
So this is just an example of finding. So right now, I don't know if this is what I would necessarily look at because what you're going to find is when you just take a step back and think of the market at this exact moment, we're going to find stocks that have been zipping higher and now they're getting hammered because that's what we've seen in the last few days. But, you know, um, I'd be looking right now. Honestly, right now, I would not even be looking for stuff that's oversold because there's a lot of things that are getting liquidated. These um, And there are a lot of them are things that are exposed to the global economy, um, you know, like the oil stocks, some of the natural resources stocks. Um, so at this precise moment, this is not necessarily the most useful sort of um, sort of indicator, but it can be useful. Like if we look at other points in time, look at a stock like Bank of America. This is a classic sort of thing when when I actually, you know, was creating some of these scans, I was looking for things like this. And I found this using um, a similar sort of approach. Bank of America back here in late January, this had come back and it hit the 50-day moving average. I found it because it was at the 50-day, but I also noticed that it was down and sitting on, on the Keltner. So this is an example of something that was more in more of a trend. And in this case, this sort of scan worked close, nicely for it. Right now, I feel that we're actually... You know, I'm not sure at this point really what to make of this, because the thing is, is if you think back, where were we in late January? We were already two months after the vaccine news came out. We were looking for the new administration to do stimulus and all that stuff. So we are kind of in the middle of a trend. Now, though, I think we have to be more careful that we might have already basically priced in a lot of this good news. And now the question is, is um, you might not get continuation of that. So we have to be thinking of other things. And what I'm going to really be thinking about now is um, you know if we get some kind of pullback and then looking for the areas that have fallen the least, that's what I'm going to be more focused on, um, you know, in the next next few weeks. And, and it looks to me like it's going to be the industrials. It looks to me it's going to be things like the railroad stuff, like Caterpillar, maybe things like Boeing. These stocks can, you know, that's really right now where my attention is likely to be, and also the financials. Um, those are going to be names that I think maybe could come back. I mean, we could actually see something like this in a name like Bank of America, you know. Um, so let's actually move on to that that in a second. All right, um, you can use Scanner. I didn't want to do it in this in this webinar because it's actually really slow, but you can do Scanner. You can actually use these show me's. Like you can say every night you can have Scanner run and find stocks that had Dogies. Um, so. The indicators and show me's both work in radar screen, chart analysis, and scanner. Those are the three different tools that I've been using here. This is um, this is chart study, this is scanner, and now we're going to go to radar screen, which is this. So you'll notice you can open these in these tools here. You probably have them in a different order. I move them around. You can drag these around, but you have like radar screen, chart analysis, and scanner. These are my three favorites. Okay. So. Radar screen supports advanced volatility base alerts like Bollinger Bands and Keltner channels. So let's take a look now. All right. This is my radar. I'm sorry. With it. I made everything fit here, and now I have to just... The other thing I want to mention is, is that um, Scanner lives on your computer. Radar screen, I can share a radar screen with you with a list of stocks and indicators, but Scanner cannot be moved with the workspace. So just so you, just so you realize that, that's one of the reasons why we built it. All right. So some of the things we can do now with, um, with advanced alerts is we can basically set alerts. All right. Well, actually, I forgot. All right. So these are actually the ways that you can use those indicators, like the candlestick studies can go right into radar screen. So the first thing is we have candlesticks. And so if you look at this, right now it's not finding any kickers, but it is finding, let's see if it finds any hammers based on today. And this will simply be populated or not. And it did find a hammer here in Kellogg. That's interesting. That you have no way of knowing what it's gonna show, you know, until the until the, the price action is over. And then we have a hanging man pattern, which I didn't discuss, but a hanging man pattern um, is when um, something is near the top of its range and it forms a hammer. It, it's viewed as something of a potential reversal. Um, and this is something that's also just useful to look at. Um, and this shows a series of stocks that had dojis today. You can see it populates a number one or two, which says how many candles ago the doji occurred. 
There's also this inside bar. This will show you things that form inside bars today. So you want to do it this with radar screen is you just double click on it. And if it has a value, it will populate. You're going to notice that most of them have no values because like I said, a show me will only plot a value when something happens. Same thing with outside bar. Go to outside bar. It's going to plot the high of the bar. So here we have a bullish outside bar. Cintas, this is another one that's interesting to me. They do uniforms. This is going to be an interesting company to think about. Um, they do employee uniforms like hotels and restaurants and hospitals and stuff. It's an economically cyclical company. Um, so outside bar, um, all these things, again, you can have these in radar screen. You can easily visit them. You click on the, the headers um, and it can help you find them. All right. Now, setting advanced alerts. A um, few ways to do this. Um, so if you want to just set a price line, you know, tell me when Amazon falls to 280, you're going to use last. All right, so go to Amazon, go to last, double click on it, and you can set a level for like, when it, when is it not 280, 2800? All right, you set 2800, you can set alert, enable alert, and then alert once, hit OK. And now you'll notice it has a little dot there. That means that there's an alert set. And if you hover, it will tell you what the alert is. I recommend that when you set alerts that you save your workspace. And um, I also recommend that you set all your alerts in one radar screen. That way you can actually copy it. You can go copy window and you can go put it somewhere else and save it or do whatever you want. I, 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 it's really annoying when you set alerts and then you lose them um, because it, you, know, you spend time figuring out what your level is. So it's a good idea in general to, um, to do it in one single radar screen. It can be different tabs in the radar screen, but do it in one of these apps and then make sure to safeguard it. Okay, that's how you set just a simple alert. Now, you can also set, it's not going to work right now, but you can set an alert here if you go to Keltner Channel. If you go to this and you go to Studies and you go to Enable, um, you go to, I'm sorry, Studies. Wait a second, where'd the alert go? Here it is, I'm sorry. You just go to Enable Alert once. And what will happen is, well, this actually, since I just fired it up, it brought in a bunch of things here. It's going to tell me stuff like this one crossed the upper band, EIX. So you can see something like this. You can see it cross the upper band. It shows me once, right? So it brought up a whole bunch at once because the market is closed. But you can see that right off the bat. So this is something you might find useful. This is good when you have a list of stocks, the stocks that you're interested in buying or selling. You can basically put this into a radar screen, put on something like Keltner Channel with an alert. And then when it comes down to a level that you might be interested in, it will start you know, flashing up an alert for you. You can do the exact same thing with Bollinger Bands. Go to Study, Enable Alert Once. Brought up a bunch of things for me here. What does it have? MRO. Price crosses the lower band. It's an oil stock. So you go here. MRO. Let's see. Same thing. It's an oil stock that is pulled back. Okay, I'm going to keep going here. So, all right. The other, now, the other thing that's kind of interesting is, is that you can set um, alerts at a moving average. So. The simple moving average indicator, moving average one line supports alerts. If a stock pulls back to it, it will, or, or rises to it, it will trigger an alert. So I have right here, moving average one line is the same indicator you see here. But let's see, I'm not sure what I set it to because it could be any, any interval. We need to set the interval correctly. So at this point it's set to nine day. Well, you know what? Let's set it to 50 day moving average. Like I said, let's, let's wait for Bank of America to pull back to the 50 day maybe. So we say enable alert, set it alert once, hit OK. And so it pulled up a bunch of stocks now that crossed the 50-day, price cross under the 50-day. Let's see what that is, AMCR. So this one, here's a 50-day moving average up here, it crossed under. This is something that we'll find a lot when you have the entire S&P 500 loaded. But if you have a list of stocks you want, you can just turn this alert on. Make sure you save it. Make sure it's set to the correct interval. And then, boom, it'll just come up. I also want to mention that if you go to window, uh, I'm sorry, if you go to um, view, messages, message center, this is what you'll see. And you can just keep this open right now. There's, um, this will tell you when those alerts happen. You can see all these different alerts popped up.
Now, exponential moving averages. Um, the, 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 this is one where I gave you a special um, kind of bonus alert. Um, this is not um, in the system. So you want to make sure you import the easy language that I shared with you. Exponential moving average, a normal exponential moving average, the moving average exponential will alert when the moving average changes direction. But say you want it to alert when, the, when it touches the moving average. Well, the, I, this is what I created for it called EMA with alert on close. So you can just go to this, go to alert, and then just say, you know, enable alert. Well, let, let's first make sure I set it to the correct interval, like 21 day. It's set to 21 day. I can also do the alert right here. Enable alert, alert once, and it's going to bring up a bunch of things. So for example, KMI. This one had, had was under, and then the price crossed up and through it. So this one triggered an alert today, for example. Um, so like I mentioned, this is a special one that, um, that I created. Now I wanna also in the end by show you, showing you guys this special sort of um, workspace or this special radar screen that, that I've created here. And this is a special indicator I've created, I've shared with clients before. Um, it's called MA test and EMA test. And what this will do is this will simply highlight when a stock is touching its moving average, but it will also uh, give you the color um, to tell you if it's rising or falling. So if we look at these here, these will find stocks and I put a plus sign so it will actually sort in radar screen. You can, you can then see everything that's pulled back to the rising 50 day moving average will be right here. Now, this is interesting because Abbott is one that I'd actually been watching for a while because it had kind of gone along here. I just don't like healthcare stocks myself. Um, you know, I feel like with the economy accelerating, health and coronavirus, there's so many disruptions coronavirus has done to healthcare. It hurt a lot of healthcare stocks because people stopped going to the doctor in the hospital and then a bunch of like procedures were delayed and it hurt all kinds of business. Um, and then it helped others. So Abbott is involved in coronavirus testing. You know, it is interesting. I didn't write about it because my concern is, is what happens when coronavirus goes away? Do they lose? I'm not sure. Do you know, do they lose revenue from, from, from not doing all this testing? It wasn't clear to me. So I kind of have been avoiding healthcare, but I want to just mention that this one had found various alerts along this line at different times um, using this, this same indicator. Um, and then it also is set up with different intervals, like pull back to the rising 21 day exponential moving average, you know, things like that. So the nice thing about this is you can also sort it really quickly. You can just look really quickly every day and say, okay, here's my list. And there we go. The last thing I wanted to mention that I, um, um, that is important is you can schedule alert um, scans. So let's just go back really quickly to scanner here. Um, you might, might want to say, you know, every day I want this thing to run a scan for me. You can set it so it does it at night, you know, when you're not on your system and it's um, <clears throat> it, that way it won't waste time. You can go to schedule, schedule to run automatically, set it daily for say like, you know, 8 p.m. Okay. And then you go to, okay. And now it'll say schedule and now at eight o'clock tonight, Boom, it'll run the scan. I can come in in the morning and I can look at my results. Okay, guys. So um, I think those are all the questions. Oh, options. All right. all right. Let me go ahead and add this now. And forgive me if this doesn't, I'll just add this to Keltner. All right, let's go to scan criteria. You can do something else. Go to indicator. Go to volume all options. Now you have to have options enabled for this to work. You're gonna see this has two values, volume average greater than, and let's say like, first of all, if it has any options volume or any average options volume, then that means it's optionable. So I don't think there's an actual flag for something being optionable or not but you can find it easily if there's volume. So, but let's find stuff that trades a lot of options. Cause you know, I love options, but sometimes it's annoying when you have a stock that trades like a hundred a day. Let's look for things that trade at least 20,000 a day. So I put in 20,000, which, which is a healthy number. There's probably a hundred companies on that list. And then I'm gonna set my 20 days is a good thing. Now let's run the scan and see what happens. So this is gonna now bring back stocks to trade. Now I also wanna mention, since you're curious and you're asking you like options, let's go to studies, let's go to add study, and then let's go to um, volume, all options. Okay, I can add this now. 
Um, let's just say I like things as histogram. Sometimes it comes in as a line. I want it to be a histogram, which is like a graph. Add it. It's it's pulling. See, now my data is slow. This is the reason why you want this stuff to run overnight. There you go. Now you can see daily option volume in like Gilead or some other stock like that. And now I'll just let this finish. If you guys have any other questions, go ahead and ask. I'll also remind you guys that I teach masterclass with Jesus Nava, who's another instructor. And um, that's part of You Can Trade. If you're interested in that, you can go to You Can Trade and check it out. Um, I also appear on Thursdays with Sarah Potter on her Market Today show. My next masterclass is going to be like two weeks. Actually, I'm not. Actually, it's gonna be it's gonna be on April seventh is my next master class. All right, so this is it's running slowly, but this is how this would work. Um, another thing you can do if you want to find stocks that are optional, I'll just show you this. I'm not gonna run it. Oops. Wait a second. Let's just go to the scan. You can add options related data, and then you can just say. Open interest calls and puts greater than like, you know, five in case there's any weird data in there. If a stock has open has open interest on the underlier, it must be optionable. So that's another trick you can use. I just like to find so the problem with this is it's going to return a huge number of stocks. And, you know, in my view, if a stock trades 100 contracts a day, it's not really super great to trade options on it. So um, I like to look for things that trade more volume. All right, guys, I actually am going to go ahead and end this. I think you see how this works. I'm going to share my email with you. If you have any questions, you can email me at drussell at tradestation.com. I'm happy to share information with you if you email me there. And you know, thank you for watching. I'll just say that one of the great things about TradeStation is that you can really go through and um, you can make what you want. That's the great thing about it. It's really like this, this huge set of tools and um, it's just really useful. And you know, I love digging around with this stuff. And I know there's always some of these guys out here and you're, you're working on these, uh, these scans on the weekends and stuff. And it's so interesting to really delve into them and really look into them. So it's always great to talk to you guys as well. Thank you for watching. And I will be back in, I believe, April 14th is going to be my next one. I'm going to do a masterclass. I mean, an art of trade station about earnings season. How do we anticipate the stocks coming up to earnings season? And the one thing I'm going to mention is it's interesting because some of these big IPO stocks, DoorDash, Airbnb, Palantir, Snowflakes, these companies are, you know, we're getting now into the third, fourth earnings reports with some of these companies. And that's just an interesting thing to know about. I'm going to also kind of show you how to weed out and just find those companies because uh, there have been some other interesting IPOs, you know, in the last few months. So hope everyone has a great day and um, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much.